Shalom Aleikim to each and every one of you in the name of our Lord Yeshua Mashiach. It is another privilege again that the Lord has given us for us to continue in humility studying the word that he has sent to us. He has taught us to study, to be familiar, to familiarize ourselves with the uh, his uh, his word, so that we know what is uh, his will. So we are talking about uh, the new birth. What is to be born again? And uh, in the next session, uh, maybe today, uh, we will continue from where we we took. But I wanted to discuss much deeper. Why is that the Lord requires us to be born again? That's the main question I want to answer today. But coming back a little bit to what we saw yesterday concerning to be born of water and of spirit, uh, we read it together in the book of John. John chapter uh, 3. After Nicodemus asked the question in verse 4, then Nicodemus said, Rebirth? How can a gray-headed man be reborn? It's impossible for a man to go back into the womb a second time and be reborn. So, he was not understanding the principle of being born for the second time. So, the birth of the second time is not a physical birth. What is impossible to this body is not, spirit, is, is not impossible to the spirit. So, Yeshua will explain to him how the process is going to take place. He says, verse 5, I speak an eternal truth. This is the level where you have to be spiritual. I speak an eternal truth. Unless you are born of water and spirit. He did not say from your father and mother. No. Because father and mother in a physical point of view is our parent that physically brought us in this world. So here, answering to Nicodemus, he told him it's not about you going back to your mother's womb and your father gives you there so that you can come. Those two, no, those two are replaced by these two here. You have to be born of water, which is the word of God, the word seed, the message, the will of God of that time when you are living, that word, you must be born of it. It means you believed it, you, you, it becomes you, you become it. Then that word will now produce you. And the moment you are produced, the spirit will come. Just the way when the Lord formed the man from the ground, the man stood up like a statue. Then the Lord with spiritual breath, the, the breath of life in that man. And what happened? We see the man becoming. He was not, but he became a living soul. That's the same thing. So, first of all, the seed word of God must come into you. And when the seed comes, to start the process of making you look like the Son of God, that mechanism in you is covered, is warmed up, it's put in the context of the Spirit. The Spirit comes in you for the life to come. Look at Mary. Mary received also the Word, the Word seed. The Word seed came in her. She said, be it done to me, be it done to me according to your word. So the word 
spoken, the spoken word was received by Mary. And when the spoken word was received, believed by Mary, what happened next? The spirit came to cover the woman. Just like when you have eggs, the, 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 the hand, the chicken comes and covers the egg. So that the covering of the, 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 the egg by the chicken will ignite the process of uh, 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 life to come, life to be produced. That's the same way also. Every time the word of God is being preached, it comes with the spirit. The spirit always follows his word wherever the word goes. And if the word of God is received in you, at the same time, the spirit will come over that word. It comes to cover you. And now that warmth of the spirit will make you be in that process finally look like Yeshua. Because it's Yahweh who forms the spirit in the man. He forms his own spirit also in us. Yeshua grows in us. And for that to happen, you must believe the true word of God, not the word of the denomination, not creeds, not dogmas, not the, 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 the belief of our church or whatever it is. Always believe Christ. That is the ABC of the word. ABC, the, the ABC, the, the little things. ABC, I will define it as always believe Christ and Christ is the word. Do not let anyone teach you his, his things instead of the word of God. The, the heaven and earth will pass, but this word will remain forever because the word is God. Elohim is his word. So that is what I wanted you to understand. So Nicodemus did not understand this. He thought you were supposed to have a father and a mother and also physically for it to happen. No, you will be having a father and a mother who are spiritual for a spiritual birth. Like Yeshua said, what is born of flesh is flesh and what is born of the spirit is spirit. You will be still living in this body. You will still be a man or you will still be a woman. But in you dwells the spirit that makes you live accordingly, make you love righteousness. And that new nature will kick away the, the, the desire of the flesh, the lust of the flesh, the nature of the flesh. It will be a constant fight in you for doing the right thing because the human nature will normally lead you to do the wrong thing, but the spirit in you will always be stopping you wherever you want to do something wrong. Amen. And all this is possible to happen only if you avail your spiritual realm to receive the seed of Elohim. You need to open up like the earth opens up so that the seed can be penetrated, introduced in us. Then the process starts. Amen. So this is what we saw briefly yesterday. I wanted to come back to it. So at that time, when this happens, no one understands you anymore. You become like, uh, you know, why is this woman, why is she not putting makeups and earrings? Why is she not putting trousers? Why is she not behaving like that? Why is she not having boyfriends like us? It's because you become like a wind. They can hear you, they can feel you, but they don't know where you come from and where you go. They don't understand which world are you living in. That is when a new nature is in you. Now, people, Yeshua said you become like a wind. The, the men do say, everyone steals in, in, the, in the government. Everyone has got a, um, a side chick. Everyone is, uh, is planning something and you are working in a, in, a very com in a big company where you can make money. But why is that we, we are making money, you, you are still like this? Why is that you, you behave different? Why, why is that? No, you behave different. Not because you want to be different. There's something in you that keeps you 
clean, just like a duck. A duck does not need to, uh, uh, sorry, the, no, no, the, the, not the duck. I wanted to talk about the, 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 the dove. The dove does not need to go and, uh, and shower and all those, this thing. Mm -mm. There is some oil that is in the dove that makes the dove to always be clean on outside. So, we, regardless of whatever it is, the dove has got that oil which has been placed by God in it. And remember, Elohim loves the dove. He has made it in, in such a way that it cleans itself from within. If the Spirit of God is in you, from within your heart, the things that the body will be wanting to do will be mastered. That's why we need to talk about the stature of a perfect man. When you become a perfect man, what do you see? One of the things you will master yourself. People will be gossiping, you remove yourself from that place. People will be stealing, you rebuke them. You not partake in everything that is wrong. That is when the nature passes away. Amen. So now, let me say in a few minutes before we read Romans chapter 6, I want to say something quickly. Why is that the Lord does not recommend the first birth for people to be his children? It all started in the Garden of Eden. The man and the woman, if you read Genesis chapter 2 from verse 25, the Bible states clearly that the man and his wife were both naked and they were not embarrassed. Why the Bible precises that they were not embarrassed? Because in chapter 3, they will be embarrassed. Something will happen with uh, their nakedness. And all of a sudden, a, a creature appears, the serpent. This man and this woman, they were living in this life, in the garden, naked, they were not embarrassed. The trees and the birds and the animals were there, they, they used to be with them without any problem. But there was something that Adam and Eve did not know. They, this is what the Lord forbid them to do. And Adam observed it until the day his wife was contacted by the serpent. I am warning everyone who likes talking to other people's wives when the husbands are not there. You see here when you start introducing yourself to uh, uh, someone's family and the man is not there and you are having a long Facebook conversation, long messenger conversation, long WhatsApp conversation, email and whatever it is there today, someone's wife. What happened? That is not good. If you go to look for your brother and he's not in his house, go away. Even if the sister, by respect, we say, well, you wait, the, the brother is coming. Mm -mm. This is advice, go away. And if you want to go and visit a sister who is in the hospital, don't go yourself. Satan is very tricky. He can do many things there. And someone may misunderstand. You know how Satan can do things. So, don't go alone. Take somebody. If you're a man, take your wife. Or take some brothers and go and visit. In that way, you will remain strong. And this is the advice we are giving to everyone, whether you are a Christian or not, you are Muslim or not. Somebody's wife, you don't get close to her. She is in a covenant with another man. So you need to respect her. Distance. It's not only social distancing that we have here with the coronavirus, but distancing also from uh, other people's wives. So, 
she got convinced by the serpent. What did she say? And we are going to teach it in length. Not now. I'm just going to brief quickly what happened. So he said to the woman, because uh, do you think that the Lord uh, did not uh, say you should not eat of all these trees? The Lord said you can eat of all the trees, but the tree of knowledge, you should not eat it. Now look at the question, the tricky question of the serpent. Did the Lord say that you should not eat of all these trees here? <laughs> uh, the, the woman being, you know, she was brought something brand new. Then she, she, she even answered wrongly. Said the Lord said we, should, we can eat of all this tree here. But for the tree of knowledge, for the tree that is in the middle of the garden, which is, which is a mistake. The tree that was in the middle of the garden was the tree of life that people that they were supposed to eat. Now she, she, she removes the tree of life from its place and put the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And she even added that you should not touch it. Now, the instructions were not given to Eve. The instructions were given to Adam. And Adam was told specifically this. You can eat of all the trees in the garden, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, that one you shall not eat. The day you eat, you will surely die. That was the word of God that Adam received. But look at what Eve is saying. She, she, she first of all changed the tree and then she added, don't even touch it. Elohim never say that. Now, when already you are placing yourself, when you don't know the truth, you are jeopardizing your position. And then, let me continue very fast. This is what happened. And uh, the woman now, the Bible says, she got seduced. From what? Is a tree. The tree of knowledge. And this knowledge... When you, 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 you are involved in this knowledge, it is at the same time good. And this tree is also bad, evil. It's a mixed tree. It's got partly a good thing and partly a bad thing. Sexual intercourse. And for this woman to eat, the Bible says three things happen. Number one, she saw. The tree, the tree has always been there. The, she has always been seeing the tree. But at this particular time, three things happened before the woman eats the tree. Number one, she saw the tree was good for food. Not that she saw the fruit was good. No, the tree itself was good for food. Number two, after she saw it was good. Number two, the Bible says, it was pleasant to the eyes. Pleasure was now involved before the eating of this tree. Number three, and the tree desirable. Wait a minute. What is that tree for a woman to eat? First of all, she must see it. Number two, the pleasure must come. Number three, the desire must come. And when she eats, then after the desire comes, then she eats. What is this tree? What is this tree that a woman, before she eats, she must be seduced? Avocado? Mango? Banana or uh, pineapple? Apple? No! The food was what chapter 2 verse 25 was saying. Chapter 225 says the man and his wife were both naked and they were not embarrassed. They, they did not even know they were naked. So they were living in a very pure environment. No uh, sexual intercourse. The man and his wife were like brother and sister. They did not know those things. That's where now this knowledge came. And through the knowledge of Satan, through the serpent, the woman eats the fruit. And look here carefully, the Bible says, and she went to be with to, to her husband, and with her he ate. 
this fruit, you can only eat it when you are with somebody. So, it's a, it's, so it's, it's a, the tree. This tree can only be eaten when you are with somebody. Now, check properly. Every fruit that you eat has got seed inside. It's, for instance, when you are eating apple, you will find its fruit, its seed inside there. If, if you, you are eating mango, you will find in the mango the seed inside there. So now, here she was to eat a tree. Now, by eating the tree, that is now the fruit. Now, in the eating of the fruit, which is um, sexual intercourse, by eating the fruit, which is the sexual intercourse, inside also you must find the seed. And then when she ate with the serpent, and then after she ate with her husband, in these two fruits, there were, her, there were two seeds. Two seeds, and it was revealed here in, in, in the book of, uh, um, I wanted to say Revelation. Yes, Genesis is also Revelation. Genesis reveals the, the, the creation, reveals how men and women started, reveal Abraham, re reveal everything that happened before Moses came. Moses who wrote it, he wrote it by God's inspiration. I can even say the dictation of God. So Genesis is a book of Revelation. So Genesis and the book of Revelation, they are almost the same. And you will see they talk about, in Revelation, they talk about the tree of life, which you find also in the book of Genesis. All those things, you, 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 they, 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 they are together. So now check what happened. Adam said to God, it's the woman who gave me the fruit and I ate. Eve was asked, she said, she did not say the serpent gave me an aid. No, the serpent seduced me. The serpent deceived me and I ate. Adam did not say, uh, the woman you gave me this deceived me. No, she gave because it was his wife. She gave. But for the serpent who was not the husband, for him to succeed to get somebody's wife, he used a tactic which are called deception. Uh, the seductive uh, uh, words of this, uh, this uh, serpent took the woman captive into this and she committed adultery when she ate. And now, to confirm it, look at the word Elohim is talking to the serpent. Because you have done this, because you have been busy doing this, you are cursed. Every man who goes to anybody's wife, you are under a curse. Every man and woman who commits adultery, they are cursed. That is a sin against God. Sexual immorality must disappear from the, mid, from the midst of those who believe and fear Elohim. Even if you are staying somewhere where your husband is not there, you must be respecting yourself and make people respect you. Because you belong to somebody and that's what God has blessed. Immorality, fornication, lesbianism, gayism, all those things are cursed in Jesus' name. And they must not even be mentioned among us. Amen. Stealing, lying, uh, circumventing, uh, witchcraft, uh, those things are cursed. They should not be mentioned. The woman ate and the serpent was told, you are cursed and you will be eating, uh, eating uh, dust all the days of your life. Look at the, 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 the women today. Most of them, when they, they get pregnant, they, look, they start looking for soil. Just the way the Lord spoke to the, the, the serpent. They also start going anywhere. Even the supermarket, you find the soil. Now the woman start imitating uh, that, that serpent. Who was the first. Now, the Lord said to the serpent, I will put, now this is the revelation. Because you've done this, I will put enmity between you the creature, the serpent, and the woman. Before there was friendship and love. This time around, separation. 
And this separation from a married woman to anyone who is not the husband must remain until today. A woman who is married must always be kept separated from anybody who is not the husband. You must not create that friendship with someone's wife. That will be a potential an adultery that has been cooked up. So, I will put an enmity also between your seed, the serpent seed, the seed, you understand now the seed, so there was a fruit, the intercourse, then in, uh, inside that fruit there was a seed, and the seed was there, and the Lord reveals that the serpent was having a seed. Where did he plant the seed? Because for the seed to, 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 to grow, it must be planted. Where did the serpent plant his seed? And it continues. I will put enmity between your seed, it means your child, and the woman's seed. She was also having another seed. Two seeds are revealed there in the book of Revelation of Genesis. It says, the two seeds, the seed of the serpent and the seed of the woman, after the eating of the fruit, the, 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 the fruit of, of the, the, uh, the um, uh, yes, of the, 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 the fruit or the tree, produce these two seeds. And this was the first time the birth occurred in this world. And when the Lord spoke to the woman, he said, I can see you are pregnant. I will increase the pain of your pregnancy. And in pain you shall conceive, and in pain you shall deliver. That one has never changed until today. Every woman, whether you are a Christian or Muslim or wherever you are, women give birth with pain, naturally. That's the way it is. The cross of Yeshua did not remove that. Amen. So now, this is how the natural birth came through the knowledge by the serpent, by Satan. So this knowledge, uh, maybe you can ask me then, uh, why is that uh, the Lord then give us all this thing to reproduce and multiply and fill the earth? Yes. Well, how did it was there given to us? But in the beginning, it was for it, it has been there because Elohim knew what was going to happen. But if we remain like it was in the beginning, how did God make Adam? He spoke, and Adam was there. How did God uh, uh, reproduce uh, Eve? He spoke, and the woman came. So if we could have remained in the original uh, position, if our own ways, we could be filling the earth by the spoken word. You speak, your wife believes it, and she conceives, and the child comes. But we did not choose that way. Look at Yeshua. Yeshua came in the same process. What happened? Mary received the spoken word. After she believed the spoken word, the spirit came over her, and the conception was made, and Yeshua was born. How do we become children of God today? The spoken word come, the message or the gospel is spoken to us. We believe the, the gospel. From us, a brand new nature is born. That is the new birth. Rejecting the first birth because it came through the knowledge by Satan. That's why is in this Adamic nature doing the unwanted thing that does not please God. These are the things that we are supposed to to, 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 to remove from our nature. Sin brought in, brought in all these things. We were not supposed to be working with pain because of sin while we are sweating to eat. We were not supposed to in the beginning. After sin, the Lord said to Adam, from thorns, the earth becomes our enemy because of sin. So whenever people are sinning, is actually destroying even the family. You destroy your relationship. 
You destroy everyone. You destroy the Holy Spirit in you. Sin is our enemy. Your brother, your sister is not your enemy. You know, the, 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 our enemy that we were supposed to be fighting every time is not your brother, is not your sister. You must fight the demon that is in them. The demon that is convincing them to do things otherwise. The demon that is entertaining sin in them. This is the enemy of God and every believer. Everyone who follows, say amen. Sin is what as this. Sin is our enemy. And Yeshua died because of the same thing. Sin. That. I don't know what I can say. Sexual sin is mentioned throughout the Bible. Throughout almost every book speaks about that. Speak against that. And we must not be loving sin in any way. Beautiful and very attractive. When you're watching uh, dirty movies, you feel good, eh? When you're stealing money and you are feeling good, right? Sin is very attractive. But not attractive to the believers. Sin is something we must get rid of in our lives. So that's why you can see the him has rejected the first birth and he wants everyone now to be born from the spoken word, which is the original sin. The, the, the seed that should have produced us, the original seed uh, is spoken word, the heavens were created. With the spoken word, the earth was created. With the spoken word, the man was created. With the spoken word, the woman was created. With the spoken word, Jesus was made flesh. With the spoken word, those who have believed also the word of God have become now children of God through the power of the Holy Ghost. The, the, with the spoken word, the church has, has come. With the in the family, those who believe. With the spoken word, God will destroy this world. With the spoken word, God will make a new heaven and new earth. With the spoken word, we will be having the millennial reign. Everything is in the spoken word. Be careful what you say. Especially believers and true men of God, be careful what you say because what you say can transform somebody or can deform somebody. You must know what to tell your kids. Always bless them. Say good words to them. Don't be uh, speaking things against them or even uh, make prophecies against them. Those words you on your children, they will come to pass. Say good things on them. If you've done something wrong, show them the way. Sometimes I've learned through uh, many experiences in life, sometimes many of our our children are going astray because we as parents sit down with them and talk with them or talk to them. God's a direction on what to do and what not to do. Sometimes it's not shouting, beating. Sit down, talk with them. Show them the wrong they are doing. Show them the reason why it is wrong. Explain to them why they should not be doing what they don't want. To do. The consequences, the result of all this thing. This is very important. The child must understand because he is the baby. Oh, he's, she's not a baby anymore. She's grown up. He's grown up. Explain. Take your time to explain. Teach them the ways of the Lord. In that way, they will not disappoint you. Amen. That's why you will see David when he said here, uh, look, look, it, David's friends, they did not commit any sin. They, they got married in a normal way. They were uh, People who did not commit any uh, fornication or sin for, for them to be there. No, they did not. But look at what David says here in the book of uh, uh, Psalms chapter 51. 
51 verse 5 says, Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity. Conceived me. Are you listening to this? This is the first nature. We are sinners. We are coming in this world in the Adamic nature. Sin. Paul said, the right thing, the good thing, the right thing that I know that I have to do, I don't do. But the wrong things that I need to avoid, I need to let go. I find myself doing them. Then he said, what is happening here? It's covered by the Spirit. It's this body. And deliver me from this body of sin. The body has been sold to sin. Why? This and the earth has been cursed. You remember? He said to Adam, the earth is cursed because of you. That curse of the ground. Nature, human nature, it's there with you. Then he said, Glory be to God because of Yeshua HaMashiach. Jesus Christ in you is the hope of glory. Jesus in you re removes the, na the na nature of sin in you. He creates in you a new spirit. He creates in you the good of doing the right thing. The spirit. And because you are born of what? The water which is the word of God. The word of uh, the truth and the spirit come. This spirit will lead you and you will give you the right understanding of things. Like here in the Bible, in the book of uh, Isaiah chapter, let me show you which kind of spirit. The moment um, the spirit comes in you, I'm stopping here. I want to read it quickly. In the book of uh, Isaiah chapter 11, we have seven kinds of spirit of the Lord and these are the spirits also I pray that each and every one of us be influenced with them and we must be able to see the work of the spirit in us when we believe so tomorrow because I feel I feel led I want to talk for 40 minutes about the original sin the original sin then after that one I will talk to you about what is the work of God before we go to the state of a perfect man. Look at the what the Bible says. So every man surrounding a going around a divorced woman is a snake. Every man going around a married woman is a snake. Every man who's around somebody's a, a fiance is a snake. The characteristics of demons must be away from us. The Bible forbids us to even Carry divorced woman because a divorced woman, according to the word of God, the eternal word of God, is still married to the man who divorced her. No matter how many times you can sign divorce papers, you can do all those things in front of men, you are divorced, you are you you, you are you are you are, you are you are free. No, in front of God, you are still bound to that man, according to Romans chapter 7, verse 2. And 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 10, 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 10, 11. But let me read the kind of that we must be influenced with when we believe, when we are in the new nature. There shall come forth a road from the stem of Jesse. A branch shall grow out of his root. Listen carefully. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him and let also as I pray here for those who have believed this truth those who have been in Christ I'm going to read also of uh, 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 what the first Corinthians chapter 6 which the overseer was reading uh, yesterday it's very important it's all about the new birth so it will be the spirit the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him 
And I pray those who have believed him, let the spirit of Elohim, let the spirit of the Lord, let the spirit of Yahweh El Shaddai rest upon all of us who have believed. Let's say amen. The spirit of wisdom and understanding. Let this spirit be in this spirit will be seen in everyone who is born again. The spirit of wisdom, he will be always a wise person, man or women. The spirit of understanding, they will understand what the Bible says. These, these are the spirit of God. When you are born, the action of the Holy Spirit will also give us this. The spirit of counsel and might. The spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. Let these ones rest in each and every one of those who have believed. Amen. The Bible continues. His delight is in the fear of the Lord. He shall judge by the sight of his eyes not decide by the hearing of is here. So this is now when, when you, you hear something. Don't decide. You scrutinize. I hear a brother telling me about this one and that one. I don't believe to it immediately and make a, a decision upon it. No. We are not supposed to make a decision, even make a preaching based on rumors. Before you talk about something, you must investigate and establish that the matter is that way. The spirit of Christ in you will not allow you to decide based on hearings, based on rumors, based on, uh, based on uh, the hearing of his heart, of the ears. Amen. We will do things according to what the Bible righteousness advises. Until we meet again tomorrow, may Yahweh El Shaddai guide you. May Yahweh El Shaddai heal you. May Yahweh El Shaddai uplift you. And I pray, as I was saying now, I see the whole world opening up now and everything. I pray that Elohim will protect us so that there is no other uh, wave that will come after this one. So that the word of God can continue. The gathering can be uh, restored. Everything will be restored back to normal. We continue the work of God. But brothers and sisters, do not worry. Do not worry. Elohim is with us. We shall work for him. I pray that each and every one of us is serious in the work of Elohim. Shalom, shalom, and shalom. Peace.